time for us to get into another discussion this morning. And mm. since we were showing the ocean, we got to keep with the ocean. And mm. earlier you were talking about marine biology and all that great stuff. So joining us via phone to continue our discussion, we have with us this morning, Mary Milton. Mary, good morning to you. Good morning. All right. Hey, good morning, Mary. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Fine, thank you. Just to give you a background to the folks to understand who you are and what you're doing. So when we ask our questions, they will understand, okay, okay, we're doing this today. Okay, well, my name is Mary Middlebrook. I have a degree in marine biology from Texas A&M University at Galveston. So that means I'm from the United States. Um, I'm in Antigua for the first time volunteering with the organization Adopt a Coastline. I also own an online school where I teach children marine biology all over the world. So I'm here doing some uh, work with Adopt a Coastline and doing some filming and getting some educational resources together for my students as well. Um, you, you, you took a selfie there uh, and I'm seeing a mangrove in the background. Where, what area of Antigua is that? That's in Seton's. And tell us what are you really doing and studying in Seton's when it comes to our mangrove? And, uh, well, basically, I'm doing, I'm not here just studying mangroves. I'm, I'm kind of doing a little bit of everything. Um, I've been doing some videos on corals, on turtles, on sponges, on seaweeds and algaes. Uh, and mangroves is one of the things that uh, I did some filming on. And we did some in Seton's, and we've been doing a little bit here uh, around Falmouth Harbor, where I am right now. Um, so basically just seeing what species are here, um, learning the zonation, where they're located, um, and teaching my students and uh, the people who access Adopt a Coastline the importance of keeping your mangroves protected here in Antigua. Okay. Now, uh, just as you were talking about that a while ago, Mary, we saw some pictures on our screen. I know you can't see them, but there were some pictures here of quite a bit of pollution that was on the beach. Is that one of the issues that you're dealing with while you're here? Absolutely. Um, it is a huge problem. If uh, Let me give you a real quick background of the two main types of mangroves that you'll find at your coastline. You have four types here in Antigua. And from the shoreline, working your way back inland, you have the reds first. And those are the ones that have those long, weird, kind of branch-like roots that stick out into the water. Um, those are the reds. Behind those, you have the blacks. Um, and they have roots that stick up out of the ground like little sticks. Behind those are the whites. And behind those are the buttonwoods. Um, the reds and the blacks are the ones I've been focusing on. And both of those have roots that stick up out of the ground. Um, and that is because they're in that near shore area in the tidal zone. And there's a lot of sediment packed right there. They don't, they're not really growing in soil. They're, they're growing in packed, muddy sediment. And there's not a lot of oxygen down there. So plants actually, most people think plants only need to take in carbon dioxide. Um, but that's for photosynthesis they also need to take in oxygen, and they do that through their roots. So because they can't do that in that packed, tight, muddy sediment because there's not enough oxygen there, they have their roots growing up in the air. And so the problem is, is when the litter is wrapped around the roots, it's literally suffocating the plants. It's just like you putting a plastic bag over your nose and mouth. Um, eventually that litter is going to suffocate out those plants. And those mangroves are so important here in Antigua because I'm sure you guys are familiar with hurricanes. And the root systems of these mangroves are protecting your shorelines. Um, they're keeping them from erosion from the waves. And they've um, also done scientific studies showing that the damage behind mangrove forests uh, during a hurricane or a tsunami is much less than coastlines that don't have those forests in place for protection. So it's really important that Antigua takes care of these mangroves, not just for the ecosystem that these plants provide for the animal life, but also just to protect the people on shore and protect your coastline. So uh, Mary, what are, what are you planning to do as you're here now and you're realizing that this problem is happening? What is the plan going forward? Well, I don't have my specific plans um, to work here in Antigua. I leave next week. But what I am doing is supporting Adopt a Coastline. Um, this organization is, here, is a local organization to Antigua, and they are empowering uh, specific communities and youth within those communities to take stewardship and ownership 
of their coastal areas and do cleanups of the coastal areas, pulling out the litter from the mangroves, the litter that's just on the beach. Um, so it's not only keeping the coastline clean for the plants and the animals that live there, but also for your tourism industry. Um, as a person who's never come to Antigua, as I'm walking your coastlines, uh, there's a lot of trash and tourists don't like to see that. We want to see nice, clean, pristine beaches. And so I do understand that a lot of, of litter can wash in from other areas because you have currents that carry it here. But the people of Antigua need to really work hard to make sure that they're putting their litter into trash receptacles, um, getting recycling programs into place to get rid of a lot of this litter. And if they see it, Pick it up, whether it's in the mangrove forest or just laying on the ground, because eventually it will get back to the ocean. Pick it up and put it in a proper receptacle so you're taking care of your environment that you've been trusted with. Now, uh, Mary, you spoke about pulling the trash out of the mangroves. Um, as you spoke about them, though, they do sound uh, very fragile, like something that we need to be careful how we handle. So is there a particular way we need to go about it when we are trying to clean up this area? No, they're not that fragile um, as far as if you're trying to pull litter off of them. That's not much of an issue. It's better to get the litter off of them than to be trying to tiptoe around them and, and be careful. Um, these plants are strong. They're sturdy. So if they have rope wrapped around them, um, you know, untie it. Take it off. If you see plastic, pick it up. It shouldn't be tied around so tight that it makes it difficult to get it off. The only thing that you may find difficult is access to some of these areas. You really do have to do some hikes. I've been hiking um, some of the coastline with uh, Jennifer Moranto, who is the, the founder of Adopt a Coastline. There are some definitely tight places to get into, but there's lots of open areas too that there's, you know, it's pretty easy for people to get in there and you know, work to pick up this litter and get it out of the ecosystems. And I think that Jennifer's organization is willing to support any coastline around Antigua if someone gets a, an adult mentor together in that area who can then um, help organize the youth in that area. Adopt a Coastline will then support that team um, and help them with the things that they need to keep their beach cleanups going and, and make them successful. Mary, I want to say thank you for sharing some of that information and some light on our coastline, especially up there in the Seaton's area. And keep doing the good work that you're doing here for us and make sure all information, all, all data that you get is being transferred to the necessary authorities. Will do. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. All right, Mary, thank you. So you see how important it is. Yeah. You see why we say clean up our beaches. Mm -hmm. You see why we say don't dump plastic and all that stuff into the yep. ocean. Uh, we heard from Mr. Commercial before, of course, talking about the importance, and Mary mm -hmm. just came here, and she reinforced that, um, talking about the fact that we are a hurricane-prone country, we're in the mm. hurricane zone, and if we lose these mangroves, we're in some serious, Mangrove, serious oh, coral reefs, trouble. everything. Yes. Oh. And so very, very, very important, very important to our existence here as a country, as a nation, and so we need to do our part. Clean up. And she said it is her first time here, and she's seen a lot of litter along the coastline, and that Ooh. is something that really <laughs> surprised her. And so we need to go on out, do our coastal cleanup, try to get this place in pristine conditions. I understand why is it important, because if we, we need to protect it for ourselves first, mm -hmm. and then we do it for others too. That's right. We've got to take a commercial break.